Hello and welcome to another build guide. So I always wanted to try the new Deadeye after the rework. Um, if you are not familiar in 3.13 Ritual League and also Echoes of Atlas um, expansion obviously. They reworked Deadeye. So I already mentioned the changes in the trailer reaction whatever it is. But if you haven't watched that or if you are not sure what's going on. So let's take a quick look at what has changed. So what I tested in this build. So first of all, Farshot has received uh, a big change, let's say. It no longer gives projectile speed, but now it has a lot more um, damage multiplier. So dealing up to 60% more damage to targets as the projectile travels farther. So if you stand very far away from the target, you can deal up to 60% more damage. This is way more than a point blank damage bonus. So if you are familiar with the projectile builds, um, there's a point blank keystone that gives 30% more damage to target at the start of their movement. So you have to be at the boss's feet, let's say, at point blank. But with this, you can just stand a far, you know, away and deal up to 60% more damage. So the damage potential is actually higher. Um, there's also two additional projectile nodes, which I'm using, obviously. Um, by the way, yeah, Farshot also gives projectile barrages have no spread. So I'm going to just put some clips so you can see the difference. So you can just easily shoot from um, very uh, long distance, yeah, without any downside, let's say. Two additional projectiles, this was one additional projectile, so this is also a buff. So Tailwind, again, same stuff, but the effect actually is better now, so um, she received some buff, actually. So I used Wind Ward while leveling, 3% less damage taken per Gale Force, uh, lose all Gale Force when hit. So once you attack, you get one Gale Force thanks to Gathering Winds, and you can get um, 10 stacks. So if you have 10 stacks and get hit, you know, got hit by something, you, you mitigate the damage by 30% less. So less is obviously better than reduced because it means more multiplier. So this actually saves you a lot. So this is how I leveled it, but once I hit level 97 and it was enough for me, um, I just respect Wind Ward and focus on more DPS and get Focal Point. 75% increased effect of your mark. So this actually gives a lot of DPS because marks, uh, we are using Sniper Mark obviously best for um, projectile builds. This gives a lot of DPS, you know, maybe a million, I'm not sure right now, but yeah, we are going to check all of those maybe later. So yeah, so I tested Far Shot and also Normal Point Blank. There are going to be uh, boss clips with each of those. But maybe I built my character for long range, I'm not sure. And again, um, as I mentioned earlier, Farshat has a better damage multiplier. So if you can get used to the playstyle, it is way better for DPS. But in some occasions, uh, mostly for you know fights like Cirrus, let's say, because he teleports a lot and you also dodge a lot of stuff. And maybe some map bosses, maybe, yeah. Um, it is actually uh, worse than a point plan because... Um, you have to dodge a lot and it is very hard to target a long range um, mob, you know, monster with your mouse, you know, cursor. Because you have to move your mouse a lot and it is a little hard to um, point and shoot sometimes. But overall, um, it is a very fun play style. Um, I believe it is way better for mapping. So yeah, but there are going to be all, all, um, lots of boss clips obviously as usual, so check them out. I'm gonna um, just give you two different talent trees in Path of Building, so you can either play with Far Shot or Normal Point Blank. I also used and uh, tested the Occupying Force, another new um, notable for Deadeye. So Mirage Archers are not attached to you, plus two maximum number, blah blah whatever. So you can actually summon a lot of Mirage Archers. Um, they seem, you know, fun, but uh, not that practical actually. You can maybe test them out, but I don't recommend uh, playing with those, especially in fights like. Serious and maybe some other hard content. Um, I'm not really sure, you know, you need to do a lot of um, moving and targeting. If you just um, attack to a blank target, you know, if you miss your shots, you can easily get uh, run out of mana because using Mirage Archer support actually increases your mana cost by at least 20 or 25. So I had something like 53 mana cost, which is a lot. Normally it is something like 26 or 29, I believe. So almost double the mana cost. So I don't recommend playing with this Occupying Force at all, but if you want to try something new, just go for it. So I will be back after the clips. 
and explaining everything. So enjoy the clips and I will see you later.
Alright, I'm back. So we are gonna start with the items obviously, but before that I want to explain a couple of more things. So first of all we are playing obviously a Deadeye, um, she's probably the best right now for Archer builds after the huge Assassin nerf. I actually played Ice Shot as Assassin two leagues ago, um, it was one of my mostly viewed videos. But unfortunately Assassin got nerfed a lot over the two leagues, you know, uh, so I don't recommend him that much these days. So Deadeye after the buffs obviously has um, good DPS potential, but even with the Gale and what's that, Wind Ward um, notable, 3% less damage taken per Gale Force, uh, she is not that tanky, alright? Uh, once you know, you know what you are doing, um, if you are good at this game, if you know all the encounters, all the fights, everything, you are fine, alright? Because I leveled to 97 and I also did a lot of Harbinger, Waldo Farm and there is also a video in my channel about Waldo Farm, so if you don't know what it, that is, also you can check that for good profit. So I did some hard content, killed every boss almost, you know, lots of stuff you just watched. Um, she's good at single target bosses, you know, like Conquerors, Guardians, Shaper, maybe, you know, Cirrus, um, those kind of stuff, but she's not that good at multi-boss fights. Um, something like 10 boss maven arena if you cannot burst something very fast because this is a barrage build obviously you just shoot something you know straight forward uh, just a single target skill so if there are lots of targets at once um, things are st starting to get you know a little sketchy actually my gear isn't that insane obviously this is an archer build so you cannot do this at leak start or with low budget do not even try it because that will your DPS will just suck or you have to sacrifice health um, and that is not recommended. I have 5.1k life, uh, that is also in my standards low but it is not um, that easy to get life on a Deadeye. I actually highly recommend you to play Lightning Arrow build um, with Impulsa chest, stuff like that. I also have guide um, that I made maybe two months ago, everything is same, obviously the threat of building also got updated. So you can also check that and do whatever you want. If you like Ice Shot, try this, if you want Lightning Arrow, just go and do that. So one last thing to sum things up, if I wanted to play another Archer, maybe next league, I am 100% gonna play Lightning Arrow again, because the gear setup is way better, because I also use some deck stacking, this is not pure deck stack, because that is just a glass cannon uh, DPS build. You cannot play that alone, you're gonna die all the time, maybe you have, if you have Headhunter and things can be different. But if you are playing without Headhunter, if you want to play and kill bosses, don't want to die, alright? So this is the best I could do. And also, again, I didn't spend crazy amounts, I have some expensive pieces, obviously. But my ring, um, jewels, let's say, quiver, yeah, they are not that insane, alright? You can get better stuff. Especially my ring is just so bad. So yeah. So let's start with the items. So first of all, bow option. If you want to try this with a little less budget, but I do not recommend it. You can start with a death opus. Otherwise, I use the dex stacking bow. This is the best uh, thing you can get probably. Or if you have uh, money, you can just get a physical DPS bow with also two additional arrows. Uh, something with probably at least 500 or maybe uh, close to 600 DPS, physical DPS obviously, because I shot will convert the rest. <coughs> so yeah, those kind of balls are also good. Um, again, yes, this is a dex stacking ball, but I didn't stack that much dexterity because that is so glass cannon and I don't want to play that. So yeah, that's why you can use a physical DPS ball and convert that physical. So two additional arrows obviously, um, cold damage and also dex stacking st um, stat, 2 to 4 cold damage to attacks per 10 dex, also penetration is nice, you can craft that, and other stuff like crit chance or attack speed as a suffix, so yeah. Um, quiver, so I believe spike point quivers are better because if you pierce a target um, and it hits a wall or something like that, it doesn't chain because pierce comes um, first before a chain happens. Um, but my clear wasn't bad, but if you want a better clear, uh, I believe a spike point quiver and then awaken chain jam. I didn't even buy that. It is actually cheap this league compared to the previous leagues. Uh, it is like 6 or 7 exalt the last time I checked. It was something like 30 exalt in the previous leagues. 
So thanks to the new uh, Atlas passives, um, what's that? Awaken gems drop a lot more these days. So yeah, it is very cheaper. So you can get a spike point quiver and get an awakened support, um, chain support, and that can be actually better. So this was about the base types. Um, so, but yeah, you can also get a penetrating arrow quiver like I did. So you just need a bow fire additional arrow, obviously, and then some other stats. Crit multiplier is obviously the best. Elemental damage with attacks is fine, but I don't have it. My quiver isn't that good actually. Um, crit multiplier, crit chance, resist maybe, life, additional arrow, elemental damage, those kind of stuff. You can also play with high res, um, fight or whatever it is. Let me check real quick. Uh, high res, high res demise, yeah. This is an fated version of high res bite. So you just need to use a prophecy to get this or just buy it from someone else, it doesn't matter. So high risk demise is also very good. This actually gives more DPS but this doesn't have any life or other stats. Uh, this is just for DPS. Because I don't want to play glass cannon, I didn't use this. Uh, if you have a support with you to play or maybe you don't care about dying, uh, just get this. This is way cheaper and gives more DPS actually. And if you can also get a better gear than mine so you can get maybe more dexterity. This shines um, later, let's say, because 1 to 2 cold damage to attacks per 10 decks. So yeah, if you can get more decks, this is even better. So yeah, these are your quiver options. So helmet, fractal toads, uh, the best in slot for dex taking builds because it gives um, a lot of crit multiplier if your dex is higher. Obviously, this is a dex stack a little, you know, uh, so yeah, your dexterity is the highest. A lot of crit multiplier. And if your strength is higher than intelligence, so make sure your strength is higher than your intelligence, you will also get 15% increased dexterity, which gives even more DPS. And finally, 1% increased damage, uh, elemental damage per 10 decks. So this gives a lot of decks and DPS alone. Uh, this helmet, yeah. I don't even have helmet enchant. Again, I didn't spend fully on this build. So you can even do a better job. Um, if while leveling, actually, I didn't use this. I used something with life and resist to have a better health pool so I don't die. So yeah, if you want to level like I did, I am 97 uh, levels. If you want to level, push to high levels, you can play with a different helm if you want for life and other stats maybe. So chest, um, Faro's Fear, one of the obvious choices. Uh, make sure you have Aspect of Cat on one of your items. It is on my ring, so you can craft that with Faro's Fear. Beast, um, what's that? Faro's is the item's name. You can craft it with Faro's, Faro, first of the plane, something like that, the beast's name. It is very cheap these, these days. So make sure you craft that um, aspect of the cat. It is a suffix, so make sure your item has a suffix, um, open suffix. So rings and belt are easy way to craft that. Also maybe quiver. You can also put that maybe on some of your, um, like, you know, boots or maybe gloves if you want. And also attach a less duration support so the cycle is faster but since i am also using um i also got friends charge on talent tree um actually your friends charges are up most of the time so yeah you can do that or not it doesn't really matter that much but if you want to min max your uptime on your charges you can also you know craft that on your boots or gloves and put a less duration support in it or get an unset ring because that has a socket in it and put less duration in that and craft that aspect of the cat in that ring or you can also do that but again i didn't do this um, but it is a little min max stuff you know you can do that so yeah so this way you can get uh, charges obviously without doing anything because aspect of cat will just give you those friends and power charges um, all the time gloves so some incursion modded gloves um, increase damage with hits against shield enemies also some life resist and you can put attack speed maybe attack speed is probably the best you can get after uh, that shield damage stuff you can also play with that tomb fist 2 socket one obviously for intimidate and maim uh, maim doesn't give dps obviously only intimidate gives 10 percent increased damage taken and maybe put some good jewels in it and get some decent dps so yeah you can also get a corrupted um tomb fist which is easier than a rare blow obviously to, you know get a corrupted one maybe put some good stuff like attack speed plus one friends charges that is also very good so yeah these are your glow options good you just need elusive for defense elusive is dodge and move speed obviously and some movement speed resist life and that's it 
if you want to stack more resist on your boots it can get a little expensive so yeah this is for only defense this doesn't provide any dps at all because we are um, already playing a dead eye you don't need a tailwind boots so yeah elusive that's it i also enchanted with with avoid being stunned if you have killed recently i also have some stun avoidance um, thanks to heart of oak so my stun avoidance is a hundred percent while I am doing maps and killing stuff, so I am basically stun immune while mapping. But if you want more DPS, you can get penetration if you haven't killed recently. So that works on boss fights, obviously, and gives DPS. Amulet, um, one of the best in slot pieces for um, cold builds, because it gives a lot of uh, cold damage and penetration, and it also lets you blind shield enemies on hit. So this also boosts our survival ability because it blinds targets which means that the target will uh, miss a lot more thanks to reduced um, accuracy uh, with that blind. I also anointed it with constitution for some life uh, because yeah we are missing some life in this build so that's very important. If you have a lot of currency if you want to min max this build there are actually decks, stack amulets and they are very very expensive at least 20 torte exalt. But if you truly want to invest um, in this build, you can buy those. I'm not gonna mention those because yes, uh, I haven't even bought and tried those. I have the budget, but I don't want to do that yet. So yeah, deck stack, uh, maybe elemental damage, stuff like that, penetration. Uh, there are some really crazy stuff on amulets, but they are very, very expensive. Rings. So we are using Mark of the Elder. Um, if your other ring is a shaper item, you'll get a lot of attack damage bonus. This also gives life and flat cold damage, physical damage. Physical damage also gets converted to cold thanks to Ice Shot and some notables on Talent Tree. So this is a very good ring, but your other ring needs to be shaper based. So you want to buy something on your other ring slot with shaper influence and just put whatever you can. My ring is actually very bad. It just gives some flat damage and that's it. You should actually get some percentage elemental damage stuff like that or better cold damage I'm not sure but they are actually better so this doesn't give that much stuff actually so life resist some flat damage and I put my aspect of cat here Silver stealing is also good uh, because it gets converted to cold damage thanks to the conversions um, and also you can use maybe opal ring those kind of stuff if you want to buy a good ring and because it is a shaper in Philius, it is actually a little hard to buy and find those so you need to spend a little more so yeah this is again a very shit ring uh, i just bought it for one exalt you can do a better job if you want belt sticking wise obviously hunter base for more health because i don't want to play glass cannon i am using this you can actually use um, redeemer influence i believe for cold damage for more dps and there is also projectile attack damage i believe on those so you can actually get some crazy dps on your belt so this is something that I actually um, had on my other character, that's why I used it. If I didn't have this, or maybe if I bothered with it, you know, I would actually craft that um, Redeemer belt, uh, cold damage, cross damage, I believe. Uh, you should do your own investigation and figure it out, because I don't have it. But yeah, you can actually get a lot of DPS from other kind of belts. So sticking wise is obviously good for, um, because you can put um, Abyss Jewel in it for even more DPS and other stuff. Um, if you want to use a hunter belt like this, um, I actually have a guide on how to craft it. It is, it was the last time I checked the uh, only guide on the whole internet and uh, weird. So yeah, go and craft your own if you want, and you can also make some good profit on the way. Um, I am using. Let's just talk about also the only one abyss shield that I'm using. Um, in this steam wise, uh, I don't use any abyss shields on my talent tree. Um, I just got some fire damage to attacks uh, because I am using also Cinder Swallow um, Urn Flask from time to time. So I have to ignite the target, so make sure you have some flat fire damage somewhere on your gear. You can also get some flat fire damage maybe on your ring if you want, but uh, if you don't have those, just put it on your Abyss Jewel, that's it. So, um, attack speed, if you have dealt a crit strike recently, is uh, one of the best DPS stats. Some life, all resist, so whatever you are missing actually, but make sure you have the fire damage on some of your gear. So make sure you ignite the target. Um, let's talk about the uh, jewels, yeah. So let's check it on the path of building real quick. So because this is a dex tech build, um, I am also using a brutal restraint jewel. 
you have to do some trading to get something decent mine has only 10% total um, increased dexterity one is here I actually haven't um, added it yet because you have to add it manually so add percentage tax here also it has here so 10% total dexterity and that's it I believe if you get anything good in this maybe you can also get this also a friends charge so just make sure you check all of these and try to get some dexterity or elemental damage stuff like that to even get higher dexterity so let's take a look at the other jewels i'm using a lionized fall jewel to convert melee and melee weapon type modifiers to ball modifiers so this area is actually a claw wheel as you can see crit chance crit multiplier for claws uh, more crit chance crit multiplier for claws so these are actually ball nodes thanks to this jewel so that's how you convert those I'm using a double washer's eye, obviously this is expensive because the prices for some reason skyrocketed. This was like 20, 25 exalt and right now it is 50 exalt. So yeah, if you want to spend less, maybe you are just gonna lose 500k DPS at most um, if you get a, only one mode watcher's eye. Or maybe you can use other combinations. Um, there are lots of hatred stuff and also precision works for us because we are also using that. So yeah, just uh, use some precision hatred combinations or just take only one modded. Penetration is obviously the best probably. Um, if your crit chance is low for some reason, uh, because my bow actually has crit chance, you can also get um, hatred crit chance. That's also very good. So try to find a watcher's eye depending on your budget. So yeah, um, let's check if I have anything else jewel wise, you know. I'm also using only one jewel. This is actually um, uh, a jewel from my Frost Blades character, so that melee crit multiplier doesn't even work. So this is only a double crit multi jewel for Ice Shot, global crit multiplier, crit multiplier for Cold and Life. Um, you can also get attack speed with bows or a triple crit multiplier. Um, not melee, obviously. Uh, maybe some elemental stuff like that if you want to invest more. So yeah, again, this is only a 2 multiplier jewel for me because melee doesn't work on this build. Uh, this is something that I use on my other character. So if you want to play without um, far shot, you need to have point blank and just maybe go like this to get plus 1 chain. And there's also Neve stuff in that. Uh, sometimes the projectile just goes back, I believe if it uh, collides with a terrain so it chains again i'm not sure something different uh, something new so yeah you can also go like this if you don't want to play with far shot um, while leveling i also use this as i explained at the start of the video you can play with this all the time if you main the map with this character because this is only for more boss dps this actually gives a lot of defense 3% less damage taken because it's a multiplier so it just saves your ass a lot of times um, if you maybe play bad or maybe yeah you are playing not careful let's say so this is actually very good so you can just play with this all time or just um, because I am level 97 uh, very high level uh, I leveled with this and then respect into this for even more DPS other than that just generic stuff uh, there's not much to explain Let's take a look at the skills, uh, the jumps I am using real quick. So, so here is the thing, I am actually using two ice shots, two six, six things obviously. One is for clear, with chain, awaken added cold, elemental damage with attacks, it is not even awakened, uh, mirage archer and inspiration. So this is my clear setup. You can also buy awaken chain if you have the budget. This is my single target setup using barrage support on an ice shot. So normally a barrage, you know, a normal barrage skill. This is actually way better for single target DPS and also you can get fractal toads, whatever, with barrage fires additional projectile enchant if you have the money for it. And yeah. You can actually deal more single target DPS because I just wanted to try new stuff. I want to play pure ice shot. So if you want more single target DPS, uh, you can just go for barrage if you want. But again, I'm using barrage support on my ice shot. So yeah, my ice shot is on just like barrage actually. 
but this is a little less DPS compared to a pure barrage setup. Awaken cold penetration because this is a boss killing skill, we need some penetration, added cold, inspiration, barrage support and elemental damage with attacks. This is for some, you know, case when damage taken, immortal call action for some defense because it gives um, less elemental damage and physical damage taken. Dash is our mobile, mobile skill with second wind attached. Uh, blood rage for attack speed, obviously. Um, it also gives friends charges on kill, but, but uh, because we are playing with Faro's Fur, that doesn't really matter because we are obviously getting friends charges. But yeah, this is for attack speed. Sniper Mark is our first choice, it gives a lot of DPS. <clears throat> um, Frost Bomb, you want to use this at uh, only bosses because it applies cold exposure and that applies 25% minus cold resist. Because these skills have all, you know, some um, use at boss fights, I don't want to cast these all the time. I also attached an increased duration jump support, so it also increases the duration of the mark. And also frost bomb debuff, so you don't have to cast these all the time on bosses. Um, if you have the intelligence for it, because I don't have it, if you somehow have that intelligence, you can actually play with Arcanis Brand, but you just need a level one. But that also needs 88 intelligence. As you can see, I am missing only four intelligence. So if you have that intelligence, you can actually, instead of maybe increase duration or maybe put blood ray somewhere else, I'm not sure. Um, you can use Arcanist Brand, Frost Bomb, and Sniper Mark. So you just have to cast Arcanist Brand on the boss, and it will cast Frost Bomb and Sniper Marks on its own. So you can also do that if you have the intelligence, so figure that out on your own. But this is how I played. I casted these manually with increased duration. I don't even have to cast them again because the boss most of the time dies. My buffs, Hatred. It is not even, even level 21, it is actually better. Um, yeah. Precision, just level it until you are comfortable, you know, with your mana. Um, I recommend at least a hundred mana because sometimes you um, shoot to, you know, sometimes you miss because this is a long range build. If you are not careful, sometimes you cannot target the long distance distant uh, monster, so you can maybe shoot um, to an empty area. So yeah, do not play with something like maybe 50 mana or something like that. Make sure you have maybe at least a hundred. That's what where I am comfortable actually. So yeah, level up that precision depending on <coughs> uh, if you are comfortable or not. Held of ice obviously for clear and cold damage, and I am also using enlighten uh, for some reduced mana. If you have even more intelligence, you can also play with a four, but it needs a lot of intelligence. So yeah, three is enough. Aspect of cat obviously. Um, it is on my ring again. I already explained this, and yeah, these are my gems. So for pantheons, I haven't actually used uh, that much crazy stuff. I even, all most of them, I forgot to upgrade these. So you can pick a lunaris or solaris. They are probably the best. Um, this actually is good for what's this? And um, dodge builds because it gives you 8% reduced elemental damage taken if you haven't been hit recently because we have a lot of dodge, so this works uh, most of the time. Also, this also prevents you from getting crit in a row, because take no extra damage from crits if you have taken a crit recently. So yeah, this has some good stuff, or you can just go for Lunaris, because it also gives dodge and avoid projectiles, stuff like that, this is also good. So yeah, just pick whatever you want. For Miner, I most of the time use Aberat. Um, yeah. Because it gives you unaffected by burning ground, that is very good, especially if you are farming Waldos, Rest, Arbinger, those kind of stuff. They have a lot of burning ground effect. So yeah, this is uh, probably one of the best uh, minor pantheons these days. Or use whatever you want, but Eberat is most of the time my uh, favorite. I actually forgot the flask, so let's take a look at them. Quicksilver, obviously, with Mumu's speed on it. Um, in very big boss fights, because you don't need Quicksilver on those kind of bosses, I actually swapped this with a DPS flask. It can be an at series promise, or it can be you no know, at series promise for some um, extra cast damage. Um, if your cold damage is the highest, um, my light resist is the highest, 
This is Alura by the way. So my last resist is high, so I cannot use Wyzog. If your cold resist is highest, you can actually use Wyzog, and that should be uh, better actually. So a Wyzog flask also is good because it gives 15% penetration. But make sure your cold resist is the highest, so you need to check the overcap here. As you can see, my lightning resist is higher, so this doesn't work for me because this is a cold build. So yeah, you can just um, switch Quicksilver with a DPS flask on hard boss encounters. But if you are mapping always the Quicksilver, Diamond flask all the time, uh, make sure you have Freeze or Curse immunity on it. Quartz flask for defense, this is also for mapping. So you can also switch this with another DPS flask if you want. So make sure you have curse or freeze on it depending on what you don't have on your diamond flask. And also on big boss fights you don't even need curse flask because those maps don't even have curse. So like conquerors, serious shaper, those fights don't have curses. So you don't need curse immunity so you can easily, safely switch this with a DPS flask. So one of these guys maybe adds this problem to Wyzog. There is also Cinder Swallow Urn, I already mentioned that so let's just also um, add that. Mine didn't even have crit chance, uh, that is the best for DPS, I had something with stun avoidance but because this is something that I found myself, I didn't pay for it. Um, if you don't have it, make sure you buy something with crit chance for more DPS and also make sure you have fire damage or somewhere else on your, somewhere in your gear, I have it on my health abyss jewel because you need to ignite the target. Um, as you can see, enemies ignited by you during flask effect take 10% increased damage. Yeah, this is why this flask gives DPS. It's also a silver flask, so it gives attack speed. Dying sign, obviously. Uh, two projectiles, so this helps with both clear. And also it adds two projectiles in our barrage support, so that means more single target DPS. So this is a must, so play with this all the time, dying sign. And the life flask with bleed immunity. So this is pretty much my uh, boss DPS setup while I am um, mapping. I am using where is that quartz flask instead of cinder swallow. Or if you are comfortable with your movement speed, maybe you can use cinder swallow all the time. Uh, where is it? And also play maybe something like this. So just figure it out on your own. But quicksilver most of the time is better for mapping. So yeah, I believe this is all about it. So if I missed anything, uh, feel free to ask me in my Discord on the chat channels. Um, so yeah, please don't forget to subscribe and I will see you in the next video.